Well, for more on charitable giving in China, I'm joined by Andy Ho. He's the U.S. Development Director of the Salzburg Global Seminar here in Washington. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Andy, as we heard there, educational institutions are really the big winners when it comes to private philanthropy in China, followed by social welfare, disaster relief, and health care. So why is it that education is getting the lion's share of these donations? Well, that's really no surprise. Uh, in China, um, you know, people value education very, very highly in China. Often for many Chinese in prior generations, uh, scholarships to Western universities was often the first time they experienced philanthropy. And a lot of times, uh, foundations and philanthropists uh, would give to education. Um, very few people in China had money, but they had raw ambitions. Uh, as Zhang Xin of Zoho, Zoho China says, uh, they have PhDs. They were poor, but hungry and determined. Uh, and so education transformed their lives and gave them the kinds of careers that enabled them to make lots of money and to give back. And are there any other trends that you think have really impacted philanthropy over the last few years? Well, there's certainly a trend towards uh, uh, giving back, uh, giving back uh, in terms of uh, giving to local causes, uh, giving to education, but also to environment and to health. And so you see a diversity of philanthropic causes uh, more and more. And let's talk about the changing approach of Chinese givers. So let's start with high profile donors. We saw that um, Alibaba's co-founders created their own trust that's now worth about three and a half billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So is, are these high profile private trusts, is, is that the new trend? Uh, there's a kind of hope, high profile and low pri profile givers. Uh, you have many that choose to stay anonymous in their giving. Uh, a lot of this is owed to Chinese, traditional Chinese uh, traditions uh, where they you know, are modest and humble in their giving. But with these new levels of wealth, you have more and more that want to uh, be, be philanthropic uh, to burnish their reputations. And so um, in a lot of cases, they, they want to come out as philanthropists. Uh, but, you know, I think for China, for philanthropy to grow in China, you need more high-profile high philanthropists like Jack Ma um, that can come out and truly set the example. Now, in terms of everyday Chinese people, you mentioned some of the traditions that really shape the way that Chinese people give. And we're also seeing, as you were saying, more people now entering the middle class. How has that changed their approach to charitable giving? Uh, well, in some cases, you know, they're really trying to be, uh, <clears throat> really do, uh, really trying to be charitable and give in their own ways. Uh, to, so giving back to individuals, uh, giving back to uh, uh, families and villages and clans, uh, not so much, we're not seeing so much giving to institutions uh, as we see in the West, uh, mainly because there's still a lot of uh, mistrust of institutions and institutions and particularly nonprofits are still uh, really growing in their sophistication. And as you said, you tapped on mistrust being one of those differences between the way China, Chinese give versus Western countries. What are some of the other differences? Uh, well, I think that um, Chinese philanthropy tends to uh, give back more to uh, individuals. Uh, they tend to give to people that they, they know and they have associations with. So more uh, personal. That's right, more personal. Uh, whereas in, in the West, you know, people are very comfortable giving to institutions and writing large checks. And what about when people give? A lot of them want to make sure that the charities that they're giving to, it's actually going to reach their intended recipients. What are some of the Chinese policies in place that are really helping further that? Uh, well, I think that, you know, with a lot of Chinese uh, policies, they're really encouraging uh, to give to organizations that are in social sciences, but also they're expanding this to uh, health organizations, hospitals, uh, environmental causes as, as well. And if you could wave a magic wand and really improve the policies, is there something that you'd like to see happen? Well, I think that uh, for these charitable laws to be more clear, I think that will really encourage and spur more philanthropy in China, and that will create a better society for everybody. And do you think education will still be that, that top priority then moving forward? <laughs> it will probably be you know, the top priority moving forward, uh, but I think we'll start to see more philanthropy going to other causes as well. All right, definitely something to keep an eye on. Andy Ho, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.